Hello and welcome to the sixth in the series of PowerShape webinar series that we've been running. Uh, by popular request, this one is going to cover some service editing tools. I've hashtagged this as number one because I see this as being one of uh, many more to come on uh, some of the more advanced searching editing techniques that we have available. So what will we be covering? So here's a quick agenda. Uh, we're going to be looking at specifically the curve matching command. It's a little known command that's tucked away, people may not know about. So we'll look at what that can do and what it can offer. And then we'll move on to the stitching functionality, the ability to stitch curve edges or, or internals of curves to other entities, whether that be wireframe, surface curves or surfaces. Um, so that's really the, uh, the, the crux of this session. Let's, uh, let's get started. And as usual, what I'm going to do is go through a series of examples that I've tried to pull up from real world exercises um, to take you through what this functionality can offer. And for this first one, we've got the uh, double headlamp cavity that we'd like to go about creating a split surface for, for this region. So I've got two pieces of wireframe on the screen here, the first of which was pretty straightforward to uh, create. The second, in case you're wondering how I did that, I used the composite curve tool. So let me quickly show you what, what we did to get to that. All we do is go to the wireframe toolbar, go for the composite curve command. And what I did was put a pause position in, just somewhere near the tangent condition, press the record, and then you can see we're going to the left here on this particular curve, that's the direction of travel. So immediately I'm going to reverse that direction of travel and then step over to the other side and click where I'd like to join. PowerShape sees that I'm trying to jump a gap that's larger than the tolerance and asks me, do I want to jump that gap and if so, do I want to be tangential? And the answer to that is yes. And immediately you can see that we've traveled around there. And all I would do is carry on around the path, doing exactly the same on the other side to get across this gap here. So again, use a pause button just here and jump across. So once you've got that, you end up with the two curves that we saw a moment ago. And now I'm ready to think about creating a split surface between these. And really what I'm looking to do is to drive this split surface out horizontally around the edge here. And so for that, what I'm going to choose to do is to capture or select that internal curve there and ask to create a surface that is a split surface. Now, before I press that button, I'll make sure that I've got the Z axis defined here because that's the direction of the, uh, the general um, flatness, if you like, of the surface. And then I've got the arrows here to denote inwards or outwards. I can click these to, to control which direction I'm going in. And then I can press the, the amount that I'd like to go by. So I'm going to go regular out. It's a little bit ripply around here, so I'm going to use one of the smoothing options on this command to minimize that uh, condition around here. You see that's a lot smoother already. So that done, I'm going to press OK. And we've got a split surface. I've made it 70 uh, long here. But really what I wanted to do was to have it go out to an edge that I've drawn myself. So you can see here, I've got some 2D wireframe that represents what I'd like this to look like. So if I select this edge, Go for the Manage toolbar. One of the options on the, uh, the Curve Editing page here is the Match Curve command. And if I click this, what I'm able to do now is to first of all select the edge of the surface. I've got a tick here to tell me I've got that already selected. But then I can go and select some wireframe that I'd like to match onto. And if I hit the Preview button, I don't know whether you can see there, but we've now got a new surface here. So there was the old edge of the, the surface. Here's the new edge that's been stitched onto that geometry. But it hasn't touched this area here or this area here. And that's because the surface lies inside of this curve. And that's where this little tick box here comes in. Because if I click that and re-preview, what we see now is it sti uh, stitches all the way out to the outside edge. If I press apply and cancel, and then rotate around, what we can see is that it's stitched outwards, but only in the 2D plane. So it hasn't actually stitched down onto this, the, the curve. It can only use that as kind of a template. So what we've done there is quickly create a shutout that we wanted with the edge that we needed. Okay, so let's um, delete that surface and, and look at maybe another scenario. And for this scenario, I've got a piece of wireframe that I've drawn that is a 3D surface edge that I'd like to get to. And you may wonder, how did I get to that surface edge? Well, what I'm going to quickly do is draw a simple piece of wireframe to show you. I'm going to use the lock command here. I'm going to lock onto the 2D plane 
so that when I draw in the X and the Y, the Z will remain at zero. And I'll quickly create a rectangle that represents the shape that I had, so something like that. So if we look at that from a 3D view, we can see I've now got my 2D rectangle uh, and I've got my 3D curve there that I'm, I'm going to arrive at. So I'm going to capture that as a composite curve. All I did there was hold the Alt key down and click the left mouse key. And for an obvious composite curve track like this, it goes all the way around. And then having done that, I'd like to add in an internal. And I'm going to do that holding the Control key. So what I did is I kind of woke up this point by clicking it and it gives me the handles. Hold the Control key down and then walk in a point. And I'm going to use the midpoint to add a point in along this span. Something like that. Okay, well having got those points in, what I'd like to do maybe is, is take the entire curve and drive it upwards. So let's switch off the lock, let's remember to do that. And then drag this up by, let's say, something like um, 70 millimeters. So 0, 0, 70, oops, 70 uh, millimeters. Put it somewhere mid-range on the part. Okay, having done that, let's look at it from the side here because I'm interested in maybe taking hold of one of these points. And I'd like to move this up in Z. So if I use the right hand mouse key over one of these curves, I've got a bunch of controls here I can use. And the one that I'm interested in right now is to use the work plane graphics handles. And immediately what happens is we kind of a work plane drawn on the point. So if I look again from the side, I can now use that work plane to drag it only in the direction that I'm interested in uh, modifying. And likewise, if I look at the back, maybe I'd like to take this point and this point together so I only get the one work plane, but both points are being edited. And if I drag that handle, what we see is the point at the back are modified to arrive at the shutout that I might want. So let's say something like that. That just leaves a point in the center, which I'll maybe just drag up to somewhere around there. And you can see that I very quickly got my 3D curve that might represent my shutout. So let's get rid of that. That was just to show you how I went about that. And here's the one that I really arrived at, because I'd like to create a shutout between these two curves. Now I could use the surface operation smart surfacer and it will give me you know an option here but maybe I want to uh, build this myself and have a bit more control on how these internals flow and so on. So let me show you another uh, strategy. If I select that internal curve and just as we did before let's build a split face make sure we're working on the Z plane. Go for a split face and let's drive that out by 70 millimeters again. Make sure it's smooth again. Click OK. So here, I'm going to do this slightly differently now. What I'm going to do is actually grab a handle that represents a point. I'm just going to drag that and snap it onto the corner of the surface just here. Do that again so you can see that. Let's just drag that and snap that onto this corner here. Similar story in this corner here. And let's do one more in this corner just here. Good. So having done that, I'm now going to use the stitch surface command to get to this uh, edge that I want. So if I select the edge, let's make sure I've got this edge uh, curve selected, which I have. And having got that, go to the manage page and go to the, uh, so the previous one we used was match curve. This one I'm going to use, this time I'm going to use the stitch command. And here I'm going to pre-select that I'm using wireframe. So let's pre-select that and tell it that this is the wireframe that I would like to stitch onto. Now I need to get some idea of the maximum gap to stitch. And again, anywhere where you can type a number in PowerShape, you can hit the right hand mouse key to get a calculator. And on that calculator, I can go and do things such as measure a distance and it will give me some idea as to how big that distance is. So 19, I'm going to double that and let's say 40 millimeters gap is what I want to, to stitch across. I'm also going to switch off the match along scene for a moment and just preview what we get. So you can see it's all good. We've stitched across the gaps, but can you see that it's kind of curving around here and the tangences aren't very good along these edges and so on? That's because I switched off the match along seam option. If I switch that on and press preview, now we get a nice sharp edge where it sees the corner and stitches to it. The only other thing to mention is this uh, snap key points value. If a key point is seen that is close to a key point on the curve, so a curve, a point on the surface is close within this distance to a point on the curve, it will snap to that position. So you can play with that if you want to get it to go to specific locations. Good, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to press apply, press cancel, and we can see that we've got our shutout going around. 
Okay, well, let's look at uh, another scenario. And this one, I'm going to use a hip joint, and this is a, a part that I did some time ago now. So we've got some hip data that was scanned in. So what we've got on the right hand side when it uh, pops up is some triangle data. And then I've got a small surface, a spherical surface that represents the end of the hip joint. And I need to join these two together. So the first thing I can do, and these are triangles incidentally, you can see that there. Um, the first thing I can do is capture, and I'm going to use the Alt key again with the left mouse key to capture a composite curve around the edge of the triangles. And then I'm going to create a surface. So let's go for the surface, which is a, an extrusion of that curve. And let's drag that back and snap it onto the edge of this surface here. OK, well, there's quite a lot of internals on this. So another little trick here is to reduce the information on this. So let's go and, first of all, convert this surface to a general power shape surface. And then there's a button here that says approximate the surface. So what happens here is PowerShape looks at the current tolerance I've got, which is 0 0.01, and says, how many of these curves do I really need to that tolerance? And you can see a few were taken out. But what I'd like to do is reduce it further. So I'm going to say that I'm only actually working to 0.1 in this case. And let's simplify, or sorry, approximate again. And now you can see a lot more information has been re removed. And immediately afterwards, I'll turn the tolerance back up to 0.01 for future operations. So now I'd like to take this edge here, of the surface and I'd like to just as before use the edit curves option to stitch and I'm going to tell it that I want to stitch to a surface edge curve now and click the edge of the surface I want to jump to and then just increase this value so that we've got a big enough uh, span uh, value to jump across that gap and you can see that very quickly we've got a tangent condition in that area there it's not however tangent at the far end you can see that we've got get a view there distinctly not tangent here so maybe I want to match that in and that's a bit more of a challenge with triangles because you know there's no surface data it's just triangles so what we could do here maybe is use the dynamic sectioning let's do that now so under the analysis or sorry visualization tools there's a dynamic section command I'm going to dynamically section along the z-axis in this case I'm going to drag this to a position that I, I kind of want to be at somewhere around here is good let's use that I could go a bit closer but that, that's fine it creates a wireframe just there. Good. Having done that, I'm going to hide those triangles for a moment. I'm going to take the edge of this surface and just simply extend that out slightly. And I'm going to do that using the edit command. There's an option here to limit using the magnet and drag it by distance. It doesn't have to be exact to somewhere around there. So now I have a combination of curves on here. I'm going to take that far edge curve. And just as we did earlier, I'm going to use the manage command to stitch that curve to another piece of wireframe. It's this wireframe here, jumping gaps of, let's say, 15 millimeters in this case. Excellent. So having done that, all that remains is to take that intermediate curve and let's adjust the angles on that curve, the tangents, going across the curve, not in the direction of travel, so in this direction. Let's free off the angles. And what we see now is that we've used that to set the tangencies at that location. I'm going to delete that end curve, maybe delete this curve as well. And when I draw back up my uh, triangles, we can see that we have those matched in uh, much better. We can use the uh, visualization isophote shading here to help see that. And we can basically see that the lines, the dark lines, are all in phase with each other going across. And that tells me we have a tangent condition through that location there. Okay, so that's kind of a second scenario. Let's look at uh, one more. And this is uh, some sort of uh, bottle shampoo or whatever it may be that we're, we're, we're using here for this, this bottle. And what I've got are two two-dimensional curves, pretty straightforward to draw from this view. Just simply sketch those in that go through the, uh, through the model. And I'd like to get the 3D version of those that's, that's mapped onto the surfaces, or the surface rather. So to do that, I'm going to make sure I'm working in the Y direction, which I am. Select the curves and the surface in question, or surfaces in question. And then having done that, I'm going to go to the wireframe toolbar, and I'm going to ask to project the curves through an item. And I don't know if you can see there, but I've now got, let, let's undraw those. I've now got 
a couple of 3D curves that are the 3D representation of that curve going through the bottle. Okay, well with those two curves, let's undraw for a moment and look at those on their own because I'd like to select the two curves and I'd like to connect them with a surface. So we'll go to the surface toolbar and ask for a smart surface and immediately power shape looks to connect these two together. They're a little bit sort of, you can see how it's connected. It's not quite um, as I wanted. I wanted a very sort of smooth transition of all the points, very equal spacing if you like. So I'm gonna press the advanced button and ask to use a repoint command and preview again. And now you can see we get a much smoother transition uh, and equal spacing of the points. Good. So having done that, let's cancel the four. I'm gonna get rid of those pieces of wireframe for now, just pop those somewhere out of the way, switch those off, because I'm going to add a curve Again, using the uh, left mouse key to wake a point up, I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to walk a point in that is roughly midway between those two. And then having done that, I'm going to take that inner curve that I've got selected. I'm going to change how I'm editing it to use offset graphics handle rather than work plane graphics handle. And I'm going to use that uh, handle that's come through. Let's just make sure I've got the curve in its entirety, not a point on the curve, which I have now. I'm going to use that to just drag the point in by an amount. So we've made an edit there. Okay, well, go back to our original model and we can see, yeah, we've got the surface, but I really wanted these two edges to be tangential to the surface. So let's select these two edges. You can see I've got the two edges of that new surface selected. And then I'm going to use the edit command to stitch. I'm gonna pre-select to the surface only, not to edges of the surface. Select the surface and I'm going to tell it to jump gaps of up to, let's say, five millimeters. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so what happened there? Well, what happened there is we've st stitched not only across the seam, but we've also stitched along the seam. So here it's trying to endeavor to stitch the tangencies to the UV directions of the underlying surface. So I only want to match across the seam on this occasion. So if we switch the along off and preview, we see we get a much smoother looking result. Press apply to that, press cancel. We can of course trim this outer surface to the new one that we created and we result with a surface and a model that looks something like that. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for my, uh, my examples there. Uh, just to recap on what we've seen during this session, we've seen curve matching, the ability to match a 3D surface out onto the 2D element of a 3D curve, so that only taking the X and the Y, or the Y and the Z, or, or vice versa of, uh, of, of the uh, components to get the stitch condition that we want. We've been able to stitch directly onto 3D wireframe, stitch directly onto uh, surface edges, and use uh, a surface as a kind of a blanket to pull another surface onto, which was that last example. Uh, so I hope that's been useful. Uh, I'm gonna finish the, uh, the session here and just say thank you very much uh, for watching.